Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I have Tic Tacs. Today, my wife got me some white Tic Tacs for Valentine's Day. Um, I guess in, as we get a little older, um, it's the little things, you know. Um, I also went to the eye doctor this morning and the eye doctor told me what I already knew, which is that I am, uh, after 40, my eyes have started to go a little bit. And so I had to get, I think they called them progressive lenses so that the, the top portion of the glasses are for distance and the bottom portion are for reading on the, this computer. Me sit, sitting in front of the computer is part of what's really getting my eyes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trudging through it for you guys. And so, um, but I am getting some new glasses I do have my Tic Tacs. I'm not drinking my coffee. I'm having a diet Dr. Pepper right now. And I wanted to mention one other thing. Normally, I drop the ball pretty bad when it comes to things like Valentine's Day. But today, I'm looking to hit a home run. I just went to Fresh Market. And <laughs> this may not be a, a good idea or not. But, uh, but when you have... Um, when you have two boys with two different baseball practices, yes, even on Valentine's Day, you got to do what you got to do. And I, I've learned that my, just taking off of my wife, the having to make dinner is a huge thing in itself. And so what I did is I went to Fresh Market and don't tell my wife. I don't think my wife, by the way, my wife does not really make a habit of listening to my channel. I think it makes her nervous. The idea that, that my YouTube channel is going on and there's thousands of people listening to it. And so she does not really listen to my channel, believe it or not. That doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm like, I tell you, I'm in it to win it with digital assets. It doesn't bother me. Um, if my family members are not listening, in fact, Believe it or not, it makes me a little uncomfortable. I don't even like listening to my own voice back. Um, I am not. Uh, it's kind of weird when you put yourself out there. You really don't like to hear yourself. A lot of times I've had people that do videos where they'll take clips from my voice and then they'll, they'll do, make a video out of it. And it's very difficult for me to listen to those. But it, it, you, it's, it's tough when you put yourself out there and you hear yourself because you, you kind of you ever you ever experience when when like maybe your child or a friend of yours is on stage to giving a presentation or something. And it's the it, it makes you nervous just watching them and hoping that they don't get embarrassed or do something that will embarrass themselves. That's kind of how I feel when I'm listening back to my to my own voice. But anyway, my wife does not listen. So she's probably not listening to this. Um, but I, I got two, <laughs> you might find this funny. I got uh, fresh market has these, their own chicken pot pie. And I got two chicken pot pies to warm up. And then I've got two heart shaped chocolate cakes, uh, mini cakes. Um, and then I got, I spent a little more money than normal on a bottle of wine. And um, got my wife some flowers, so I should be good to go. I'm sorry to waste three minutes and 40 minutes of your time telling you that, but I was kind of proud of myself. Moving along, this is from XRP Crypto Wolf. XRP Ledger boosts censorship resistance. 1.2.0 Ledger has a number of changes, making the network more resistant to censorship. No single entity can decide which transactions succeed or fail. No one can alter a transaction after it has, is, is added to the ledger. I'm not going to get into the uh, details of that, but it's, it's good to see that things are constantly being updated and improved with XRP and the ledger. And so I wanted to pass that along. Next, this is from XRP Veteran. This is exciting. Speaking to Reuters, Mark Williamson, Chief Operating Officer of FX Cash Trading and Risk Management, 
who oversees the blockchain project, said that its HSBC FX Everywhere platform saved it 25% as compared with traditional methods. Um, and he goes on to note, oh, well, well, who is Ripple partner? HSBC. And that's, that, that's the reason I wanted to show you this. Uh, HSBC is a documented Ripple partner. Um, okay, moving along. Uh, this is from Crypto S at Crypto Stevenson. And here's another big article. I wanted to read you a little bit out of this. Santander Bank, who's a Ripple partner, and IBM start $700 million blockchain deal to enhance financial technologies. It says Bank of Santander, the Spanish bank, which is one of the largest financial institutions in Europe, has announced a partnership with the technology giant IBM. The idea of this deal is to accelerate Santander's development of technology like blockchain using IBM's technology. Santander is, is interested in blockchain te technology for a while now. The company has, for instance, partnered with Ripple in order to use its cross-border transaction technology. That's, that's interesting stuff here, folks. $700 million deal. Um, okay, now we talked this morning about J the JPM coin. Ooh, scary. The JPM coin, which is for settlement within the bank, is the way that I read that article. Well, Brad Garlinghouse, I'm sure, saw people, some people getting, oh, is this going to hurt Ripple and, and XRP? Well, I told you that it's nothing but good news early this morning. Well, Brad Garlinghouse came out and said this. As predicted, banks are changing their tune on crypto, but this JPM project misses the point. Introducing a closed network uh, today is like launching AOL after Netscape's IPO two years later, and bank coins still aren't the answer. Now, folks, here's what I want to kind of compare this to. I, I, I totally agree with what he's saying there. Um, and but but what's interesting here and um. David Schwartz referred to it as a um, walled, creating a walled garden. Okay. Well, these walled gardens where you're, is some exclusive thing to JP Moore. They're trying to get their arms around something that they're not going to be able to get their arms around is basically what they're trying to do. And you're going to see a lot of banks try to do these things. Ultimately though, the open digital assets is what's going to conquer the world. It's not going to be something you're doing. You're not doing. You've accomplished nothing with this transparent technology. If it's only transparent to the guys inside of JP Morgan, you've defeated the entire purpose of this. But more than anything, there's a word that's been thrown around. OK, Mark Yusko is one of the, I think he's the first person I ever heard refer to um, digital assets in this way. He called it the trust net, okay? And the term trust net means something. Words mean things. Someone coined that term for a reason. And I'm going to come back to what Brad said, but, said, but while I'm on this, there's a thing called a trust net. Now, Jamie Dimon represents everything about the banking system and life in general that people don't trust and that people of the world have learned not to trust. Jamie Dimon has been telling you he hated everything about Bitcoin and crypto for, for over a year or two now, while his company was developing a cryptocurrency so that they could control it. Okay. That's how I know that this isn't going to work. But even if it did work, they're not even telling you that this is for the purpose of trying to do what Ripple does, which is cross-border payments. They're talking about using this for themselves internally, not even making it available to your average Joe public. But if they did try to compete with Ripple and XRP, they've got a huge trust issue. And the trust issue, like I said this morning, that's the whole reason that digital assets are here is because of a trust issue. The financial crisis, it all bloomed out of the financial crisis because of the trust issue. That's why we're calling this a trust net. Okay, that's why it's the trust net. I gave the example of this morning. Imagine if your central bank was dealing in digital currencies and the public could go to a website like 
central bank explorer, for instance, and put in uh, the, the address of the central bank's holdings, and they could see where those holdings moved every day or every year or whatever, but could see it. That's the world that the, the average Joe citizen wants to live in so that they can trust what's going on. And this guy, <laughs> that's not, that doesn't represent trust. This guy represents something totally different, something that we're very used to, unfortunately. Okay, here is the article that Brad Garlinghouse had written that he was referencing that he had written a while back. And I wanted to read you just a part, a little bit of this. A bank-issued digital asset can only really efficiently settle between the banks who issued it. Then two, two scenarios can play out. Scenario one, all banks around the world put aside competitive and geopolitical differences, adopt the same digital asset, agree on its rules, and harmoniously govern its usage. Fat chance. And then he says scenario two, the more likely scenario, banks not in the issuing group issue their own digital assets with their own set of rules and governance. And then he says the result would be an even more fragmented currency landscape than what we have today. If banks of different digital asset groups want to settle trades with one another, they'll have to make markets between their unique digital assets or trade between their digital assets and a common fiat currency. What a mess. The second big problem with the utility settlement coin is it seems it'll be backed by a basket of currencies. Once backed by cash, it's no longer an asset, it's a liability. Trading liabilities then ultimately requires moving cash across borders, recreating today's system, but adding more friction. Excellent article, and as usual, Brad Garlinghouse is the man and did a great job with that. But I want to finish this out and go back to this Jamie Dimon. Let's look at Jamie Dimon. Let's look at who this guy is. Jamie Dimon, while bad-mouthing BTC at every chance he could, was during the same time planning his own JPM crypto. Here again, it's like a bad sci-fi movie. January 23rd, 2014, Bitcoin is a terrible store of value. November 5th, 2015, Bitcoin will not survive. January 20th, 2016, Bitcoin is going nowhere. September 12th, 2017, Bitcoin is a fraud. October 12th, 2017, I'm not going to talk about Bitcoin anymore. January 9th, 2018, I regret making that comment. Um, yeah, there's a fraud that's been going on in this world for a long time, and it's not crypto. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell Jamie, tell your friends and family to tell Jamie Diamond, bring it on. I'm an XRP holder. Thank you for listening.